Oh, holy shit, I'm awake. Oh, hello there, everyone. I'm back. And guess what? It's time for another video. And this time, we're talking about Titans. Woo! But yeah, not about the big one. I still need to paint that, so uh, let's not talk about that for now. So let's talk about the tiny Titans and Knights of Adeptus Titanicus, which actually won't destroy your bank account. Unless... <laughs> <laughs> what? It's not a problem, I swear. So, since I still don't know how to play the game after, um, two years? Thanks, COVID. I figured I should try and get through my backlog of Adeptus Titanicus models because I still do want to learn how to play it. So, if you are interested in Adeptus Titanicus and want to learn the rules, I suggest buying the starter box, which has two Warhounds, two Reavers, and two Night Lancers. Or... If you want one of every single Titan except for the War Master, I suggest going on eBay and getting the Battle Forces box, which has two Warhounds, a Reaver, a Warbringer, and a Warlord Titan. But you're still gonna need to get the rulebook and blast templates. So you made your choice, so let's talk about the models themselves. These tiny Titans and Knights are pretty damn detailed for their size. Here are the Warhounds, if you want to magnetize them, I suggest using 3x1mm magnets for all the weapons. And if you want some dynamic poses, clip the nubs inside the upper legs. Also, when you're building the Warhounds, you should probably pay attention to how the headpieces go together. Or you might end up like me, and f*** up the way the heads look. Good job past me. Next up is the Reaver Titans. With these, you're gonna want to start doing some dry fitting, since the leg armor plating is a bit... weird. And if you do want to pose the Reaver Titans, you gotta get a bit creative. But past me didn't do that. So if you want some cool ideas, I suggest going on Instagram and searching hashtag Reaver Titan. For magnets, I suggest you use 3x1mm magnets or 4x1mm magnets for the arms, and the carapace weapons can use 5x1mm magnets. And next up is the Warbringer Titan. I don't have a Warbringer Titan. Anyways, moving along, next up is the Warlord Titan, which if you couldn't tell is my favorite Titan. So in my opinion for now, Warlords are by far the best looking of all the Titans. Look at all that detail. It's just as good as the big boy, and it has just as many customization options. But most of those options are on Forge World. So, same story for these guys. Do some dry fitting before gluing parts, because these guys have some decent posability. Also, I suggest you don't glue on the armor panels when you're building them. The same principle goes for the smaller Titan, so you can save yourself a painting headache. When building your Warlord Titan, first I suggest you should figure out the pose you want and glue one leg, then leave the other still floppy at the knee on the other, and also, don't glue the legs of the torso. That's just another painting headache waiting to happen. Also, if you haven't noticed already, magnets are your best friend when playing Adeptus Titanicus. For the Warlord, all the weapons already have their 5x1mm magnet pits built into them. Thanks, GW. For the head of the Titan, you're gonna need some smaller magnets and need to get a bit creative again. Unless you were past me. Also, quick tip if you want to save some money. If you want some carapace mounting Gatling cannons without going to Forge World, the Reaver Titan Gatlings work just fine. Just make sure the magnets work both ways for both the Titans. So remember, when you're building any Adeptus Titanicus Titans, sub-assemblies are your best friend. Now I myself have two extra Warlord Titans and a Psy Titan, which needs to be painted, like a lot of crap I have. <coughs> 28mm Warlord Titan. <coughs> Sorry about that, just a little coughing fit. It's not Corona, I promise. So how did I get two extra Warlord Titans? Well, let me tell you. So when I first started Adeptus Titanicus, I wanted a Psy Titan, because it looks so cool. So I bought one. And a part was missing. Well, fuck. One email to Forge World later, and I got another kit. But there were no Forge World parts. Damn it! Another email, and I finally got the full kit. Woo! And that's the story of how I have two Warlord Titans and a Psy Titan. So now that we're done with the Warlord Titans, it's time for the biggest boy, the War Master Titan, which I actually have, and it's the subject to today's video. And all the footage of me painting and assembling it is from my Twitch, which you should go follow. Do it now! Also totally not thinking of getting one if Forge World ever makes a 28mm version. Oh, my wallet, it burns in agony. Why do I say this? Well, let's just say I noticed some parallels between the two Warlord Titans, and I expect a 28mm version of the War Master later down the line. So, I'm sure you're wondering, how does a dough brain like me paint a large model? First, I decide the pose of my Titan, instead of the boring monopose garbage, since the Titan actually has toes. So I decided to make it have a pose like it's striding across the battlefield. And no, I still have not decided how I want to base my titans. Sue me. Go ahead. Do it. You won't, you b**** And like I said before, magnets are your best friend. 
Again, don't know how many times I'm gonna say it, but yes, magnets are a requirement if you're gonna play Adeptus Titanicus. So for the Warmaster, you're just gonna need some 5x2mm magnets. Or, if you don't have 5x2mm magnets, just use two 5x1mm magnets. For the heads, if you want to magnetize them, you can also use 5x1mm magnets. Just drop it in between these two parts and make sure their polarity matches. For the shoulder weapons, you can either use rectangular magnets or 3x1mm magnets. These magnets are also used if you want to magnetize all the carapace guns. Also, don't glue in the large carapace weapon, since it can be slotted in and out. Before you prime it, just mask out the sides so it's easier to pop in and out, which I didn't do. Hindsight 2020. So now that the Titan has been built, it's time to paint it. Of course, sub assemblies, blah blah blah, choose your base coat, and then we can finally start putting color on the model. Now that it's base coated, it's time to paint it up in some lead belcher, and then cover it in Agrax Earthshade. This will give the metal an aged and dirty look. And for brass, use Balthasar Gold, which I then washed with Nolan Oil. Then to bring out some of the detail, dry brush over all the silver with Necron Compound. Now that the easiest part is done, it's time for pain. Absolute pain. That's right, it's time to paint a f ton of trim. My god, this Titan has so much trim to paint. Side note, paint trim first if you don't want to mess up the panels. So use the gold of your choice, in my case Retributor Armor, which is then washed with Reichland Flesh Shade. Now it's time for the easy part, which is the most important lesson we learned when we were kids. Painting within the lines. That's right, so it's time to paint the armor panels finally. So, since I'm painting Legio and Vigilata, painting the panels with corn red and corvus black. Now since I have the attention span of Patrick Starr and hate edge highlighting on large models, it's time to build a poor man's gradient without glazing. Because I'm lazy. So wash the red panels with a light and I mean a very light coat of known oil. So lightly and I mean lightly, carefully dry brush on for the red panels was docker red and the gray Mechanica standard. Good job you absolute madman. Now make a bunch of touch ups to the trim and in some cases Paint and wash it again. Quick tip, if you want to do chevrons and not get horrible masking tape lines like I did on my Warhounds, the best way to do this is to dry brush them on, because you won't get that ugly paint line. And if you want to have a gradient, the same rule applies. Now that that's done, paint in all the parts you want to be white using a very light gray. Then slowly glaze your way up to a progressively lighter gray until you get the off-white color that you want. It's all up to you. For the paper like on the carapace armor and these cool banners I made out of brass, you can either use Pallid Witch Flesh or Screaming Skull and then wash them with Agrax Earthshade. It all depends on how dark you want the paper. Now that that's done, it's time to paint some plasma. To do this, I painted a reverse plasma glow, which means it's brighter towards the bottom of the coils. You can follow the guide I have linked in the description since plasma can be painted in multiple ways. After that was all done, it's time to add some finishing touches. To do this, if you're like me and have an addiction, I mean you collect a lot of Warhammer, Select any decals you think would look great on the model from the mountain of transfer sheets you have. The best way to apply decals is to first paint the entire area you want to have the decal with art coat. Then once it's dry, add the water slide transfer and dab off any excess water with a q-tip. Then if you have some on hand, use some micro set and micro salt over the decal to soften it and dissolve the edges. Now since these are banners, I wanted to write some text on them. So I used some Abaddon Black and a very fine tipped Kalinsky Sable Brush and I carefully painted some squiggly lines to represent text. And no, I didn't write any full size text on the carapace armor because my normal handwriting is sh**. And then once that's done, give it another coat of Ard Coat to seal in the decals. And because GW doesn't make Invigilata transfers, I had to freehand those myself along with a bit of other freehand I took a crack at. And of course, don't forget to go back and paint some lenses. Nice job, the mini's almost done now. Just seal in that nice paint job using some thinned down storm shield and for the plasma coils and lenses, just use some art coat to give it that shiny look. All that's left now is just to glue on all the armor panels and with that, the Titan is completed. <laughs> Whoops, uh, yeah, I was goofing off a bit, so let me fix that.
Well, that's another model checked off with a pile of potential. This model was a lot of fun to build. Let's just uh, not talk about that Psy Titan and other two Warlord Titans I still have to paint. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. And as I said earlier, all this footage was gathered from my Twitch channel. Check out the schedule to see when I'm streaming. I also have an Instagram and Twitter account you should follow, which I post on a bi-weekly to weekly schedule. I also caved and made a TikTok account finally, where I post various videos of some of the minis I've painted. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to see when a new video goes live. Also, don't forget to check out my channel's community tab. I post on there every so often about updates on the videos I'm working on and also some other things. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope you'll tune in next time. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go make a poll on the community tab for next month's video.